today is work your way and uh, we'll be uh, now starting the session thank you So, uh, as I repeated in my last uh, webcast, I'll repeat again uh, that Windows 7 was built around your feedback. So, you'll see a lot of things you have asked for. You asked us to make everyday tasks faster and easier, make your PC work the way you want it to, and make new things possible. And that's exactly what we're doing. See how it's going to lie. So, what exactly are we discussing today? We'll be uh, discussing three main points, that is security in Windows Vista, display the power and the efficiency, and uh, a small topic with a look ahead. So let me start up uh, with uh, some smaller topics. So as uh, we all know now that uh, Windows 7 is faster, most responsive, and uh, gives you ultimate performance with your everyday tasks and your heavier tasks. So, nobody likes to wait. So, the main focus was on the basics that can impact the speed of a PC. Windows 7 starts up, uh, shut down, resumes from standby, and responds faster. You'll have fewer interruptions and can recover more quickly from problems when they do occur because Windows 7 will help you fix them when you want it to. Windows 7 gives you extended battery life. I'll uh, just show you a screenshot. So, performance in improvements are about more than speed. For example, your laptop battery lasts longer than uh, with power saving features such as. Um, Adaptive uh, display brightness, uh, which dims the display if you haven't used this PC for a while. Like this. Your display uh, will go dim as soon as you leave your PC on for about uh, 5 or 10 seconds, and after that, your display will go dim because you're not working on your PC. It's the adaptive display technology which uh, saves you power. What about the theme packages? Windows 7, you start with a clean desktop and get to decide how it looks. We provide the templates or themes and you can choose the color or format, including whether you'd like to enjoy a slideshow for your desktop background. These new theme packages include a rich backgrounds, 16 glass colors, sound screens, and screen savers. You can download them and create your own to share with friends and family. There are plenty of choices to make it yours. So what happens when you run into a problem? Uh, you, you basically run into a problem when you use a PC. What exactly do you do? Many of uh, uh, you, means the customers, ask us to stop Windows from sending so many alerts and messages and to give uh, you more control over messages. In Windows 7, you get to choose the messages you want to see. Even if you don't change a thing, you'll still see fewer notifications and icons popping up because the Action Center consolidates alerts from 10 Windows features, including Security Center and Windows Defender, rather than popping up with a message in the lower right of your screen. If Windows 7 needs your attention, you see an action center icon and can find out more by clicking it. If you uh, if you don't have time to look at uh, the alerts immediately, action center will keep the information waiting for you to address later. Likewise, I am showing you the action center user account control second. You can uh, simply 
set it uh, to always notify you or notify you when it's a critical thing or you can notify when it's a very critical thing and you don't want to get notified so you can set it to never notify and then you can press ok and it will go same with the security center messages uh, as in Windows Vista you have a security center uh, this same feature here is an action center it shows you uh, the basic things like your uh, backup settings, your uh, troubleshooting recovery, your security, whether you're using an um, antivirus, antivirus solution, whatever you are having, you're not having. It'll show you with the, uh, the red color represents that uh, you are uh, having a security issue. The yellow uh, shows you that uh, you can run into a problem if you don't see uh, to the uh, problem right now. And the green is always good to go. I'll uh, now go to the security features in Windows 7. I'll go to another slide and then I'll start on it. I guess uh, the security part is uh, the most important part when using your PC. You decide to use a PC and then you run into problems, you run into viruses, you run into spyware, and you run into unwanted malicious app applications. We have an answer for you. So I'll be discussing in Windows Security, uh, Windows Biometric Framework, Extending Authentication Profiles, BitLocker to Go, and US Improvement. So uh, starting with a bit of uh, introduction, uh, Windows Vista introduced a variety of new features. The new security technologies that had a significant impact on the Windows ecosystem. User account control made it clear that Microsoft wanted to make easy for users to run Windows without being in the administrator's room. BitLocker introduced full volume encryption for the Windows client. Restricted mode uh, Internet Explorer helped to make browsing the Internet a safer experience. In Windows 7, Microsoft has continued its investment in security by adding new technologies as well as enhancing many of the technologies introduced in Windows Vista. So I'll basically give you an overview of the new security features and enhancements you will find in Windows 7. I'll start with Windows Biometric Framework. Windows Vista included a redesign of the Win Login experience. The, uh, this experience removed the GINA, uh, the Graphical Identification and Authentication Infrastructure, and added the credential a provider extension module. The credential provider infrastructure was a set of interface that allowed consistency. The third parties extended uh, the user experience around users entering credentials and it integrates into the common Windows credential dialog. For Windows 7, Microsoft has added the new Windows Biometric Framework, WBF, with fingerprint features becoming far more common. It becomes uh, clear that defining a common framework for exposing, managing, and using these technologies was necessary to drive development and reliability. The WPS is intended to make it easier to support biometric authentication devices. In Windows 7, WPS uh, supports only fingerprint readers, but it can be extended in the future. The WPS for core uh, platform consists of these main components. These are Windows Biometric uh, Driver Interface, WBDI, Windows Biometric Services, that is WBS, WBS API, and WBS User Experience and Integration Points with uh, WBS Management. The Windows Biometric Driver Interface, WBDI, is meant to provide a common driver interface for a biometric devices. It consists of a variety of interfaces that expose the appropriate data structures and IOCTL input output controls uh, for biometric devices to integrate into the biometric framework. Drivers can be implemented in any of the common driver frameworks, including Windows driver model, uh, kernel mode driver framework, and user mode driver framework. UM, uh, UMDF, however, is the recommended driver framework for biometric devices because uh, it provides the additional benefits of greater reliability for Windows in case a crash occurs in the biometric device driver. 
uh, uh, holding uh, holding the web class, I'll say again that if you uh, have any uh, questions or queries, you can just use the Q&A panel at the top of your window. So the Windows uh, Biometric Services WBS is the key component that ties together WPS. WPS interfaces uh, with the biometric device drivers and also exposes the Windows Biometric Framework APIs, allowing applications to interact with these devices. An important feature of WPS is that it never reveals a user's actual biometric data to unprivileged applications. This is important because unlike a password, it's very, very difficult for someone to change their biometric signatures once it's been compromised. Instead, the WBS exposes a handle, typically a GUID or a SID, that allows applications to work with the biometric data indirectly. WBS also manages a pool of biometric authentication devices. This enables you to control how biometric devices are used. Certain devices can be used with any credential dialog, such as the login prompt or a USC prompt. Uh, I'm having some questions. Uh, with uh, what is the major difference between Windows uh, Vista and Win7? Uh, the basic difference uh, is uh, actually this Vista series is to tell you the basic differences. There are differences in uh, security. There are differences in performance, uh, your battery life. Everything that you work on Windows Vista goes on a major role in Windows 7. The base remains the same, but each and every questions and queries and reports and problems you had in Windows Vista, um, we are trying to solve it. We are trying to solve it in Windows 7. Windows 7 gives you a new uh, world of freedom. You can say it's freedom because it uh, lets you control each and every action that the Windows performs. So the major, uh, the major difference between Vista and Windows 7 in fact, Windows 7 is far more superior operating system than Windows Vista. I'm not saying that Windows Vista is an uh, inferior operating system, but in its class, Windows 7 uh, goes beyond any kind of a performance stack set for Windows. Uh, if you use Windows, if you have used Windows 7 uh, in the beta phase, uh, then you must have uh, seen the new taskbar designs, uh, the new input and output panels, and everything. Okay, if you think that the Windows 7 is nothing but Vista UI and XP performance, no, that is not true. That is certainly not true. Uh, Windows 7 uh, is having uh, Vista UI. Okay, you can say that it is having a uh, likewise Vista UI, but uh, the UI has been changed drastically. You have seen the new taskbar design. You have seen uh, many new features included in the Explorer, uh, the pop-up bars and uh, uh, the menu bars, the handle bars, uh, the performance integration is awesome in Windows 7, but uh, Vista had uh, some problems with it. The XP performance part uh, is uh, not, uh, cannot be considered with Windows 7 because uh, as you say, XP gave you uh, a brighter performance if you plug it in only with a 512 RAM. So a 512 RAM uh, was uh, right enough for uh, Windows XP. At that time, uh, your uh, 512 MB of memory costed you around 3,000 bucks or 2,000 bucks. I'm not very sure. Right now, a 2 GB RAM costs you 800 bucks. So, what would you say if I said you that uh, the performance uh, is based on the amount of RAM you give your system? You say that Windows Vista doesn't work on a 512 chip. Simply tell me in two lines about Windows 7 major features, okay, uh, you are not interested in uh, the whole thing, okay. Windows 7 is simply a better operating system with new features, increased performance, uh, with lowering the hardware uh, performance that uh, Windows Vista needed. So you can plug in a normal hardware, you can plug in an Intel 950 chipset, and you can have the performance wanted in Windows Vista. Windows Vista uh, was uh, our operating system that wanted a uh, minimum of uh, GMA uh, 3000 chipset, but you can now plug it in uh, now plug it in in a 950 chipset, and you can have it. You can have uh, your system running like you are running on it on a display card. The drivers, the performance is better, far more better. I can 
surely uh, say you that right now i'm this i'm giving this request on windows 7 i'm uh, the os installed is is windows 7 so it's far more superior in performance and stability and security that's uh, three words you can use to define the perfect operating system any more questions if i'm having i'm uh, sure to answer it Okay, uh, not having any questions, so I'll continue with my discuss now. So I was talking about the biometric devices. Okay, I'm having I'm having a question. Okay, thank you, Pratap. Uh, I appreciate this. I hope you're liking the session. So WBS, uh, the Windows Biometric System, also manages pool of biometric authentication devices. So this enables you to control how biometric devices are used. Certain devices uh, can be used with any credential dialog, such as the login prompt or a UAC prompt. For example, you can set up a parental control on your home system, and when elevation is required on the system, you can simply swipe your finger to provide elevation. This pool of biometric devices is referred uh, to as the system pool. There are uh, two other pools of, for devices. There is uh, the private pool, which allows applications to offer authentication that is not integrated with the Windows authentication infrastructure. And there is the unassigned pool, which is for devices um, that you uh, might have guessed with neither of the previous two pools. Each device that is the part of the device pool is actually abstracted away by the WBA using a data class called a biometric unit. Okay, I'm okay. Uh, this session is recording. Yeah, this session is recording. Pratap, and you can find it on uh, microsoft.com slash india slash webcast slash on demand dot ASPX. You can just type in that. And uh, you will also, I guess, if you register for the webcast, you will get a mail uh, with the link to the webcast. You can surely see it afterwards. No problem. But I'll, uh, I'll like if you would carry on with this session. Thank you. So the third major component of the WBS is a set of APIs, also known as uh, the uh, WinBio. APIs uh, that can be used by applications and user mode components to directly interact uh, with the devices. These include interacting with the device uh, during the original enrollment process for obtaining a user's fingerprint and collaborating it with a particular user account, as well as the task of verifying a user for logon or UAC. These APIs also expose data about the specific biometric device and its characteristics. Okay, I'm answering the question. I'll continue the way. Windows 7 enhances uh, the home and small network experience with a feature called Home Group. Users can share data such as media files between computers in a home and use an online ID to authenticate between these computers. Users must explicitly link their Windows user accounts to an online ID in order for the functionality to work. Authentication is enabled by a new protocol called Public Key Based User user or user on a PKU uh, or, or like uh, you can say PKUUU. Windows 7 also introduces an extension to the to the negotiate authentic packages. SP and EGO, that is uh, the negotiating package, is the feature that uh, decides which authentication protocol should be used when authenticating. 
before Windows 7, it was typically a choice between uh, Carbos and NTLM, Windows uh, Challenge and Response. The uh, Nego EX uh, extension is treated as an authentication protocol by Windows, and it supports two Microsoft security uh, support providers. It's also accessible to know uh, for development of the security support providers. Both of these features work uh, connecting to another computer in the home group using an online ID. When one machine connects to another, the negotiate extension calls the um, security support provider on the login computer. The security support provider obtains the certificate from the certificate authority policy engine and exchanges the policy. When validated on the peer computer, the certificate is sent to the logon peer for validation. The user's uh, uh, certificate is mapped to a security token and the logon process is completed. Okay, I, I'll be now, I'll be changing the slide. Um, so I'll, um, I'll now come to the BitLocker one. Uh, actually, I need the BitLocker site uh, just for now. So, uh, with Windows Vista, Microsoft introduced uh, BitLocker. This is a full volume encryption solution designed to protect the data on laptops and desktop machines, such as uh, brand office servers, even if the machine is lost or falls into the wrong hands. In Windows 7, many enhancements have been made to the management of BitLocker. These uh, include uh, consistent enforcement to all interfaces, the UI, the Manage BD command line tool, and the WMI provider, and separate group policy settings for fixed data drives. There are also new group policy settings that allow you to update your password and integrate with smart cards on non-OS drives. And you can also change the behavior related to automatic unlocking. In Windows Vista, uh, there have been complaints about it being difficult to partition the OS drive to prepare for a BitLocker installation, especially when the operating uh, system is already installed. This problem has been addressed with two enhancements found in Windows 7. First, by default, during Windows 7 setup, users will get a separate active system partition, which is required for BitLocker to work on OS drives. This eliminates a second step that was required in many, many environments. In addition, you can partition a drive for BitLocker as part of the BitLocker setup if you do not already have a setup uh, system partition for it like uh, why it is shown in the screenshot, I'll now change the screenshot. So uh, what about the UAC part? The user account control is an often misunderstood technology. First off, it's actually a collection of features rather than just a prompt. These features include file and registry redirection, installer detection, the UAC prompt, the ActiveX installer service, and more. These features are all designed to allow Windows users to run with user accounts that are not members of the administrator's group. These accounts are generally referred to as standard users and are broadly described as running with least privileges. The key is that uh, when users are run with standard user accounts, the experience is typically much more secure and reliable. Many developers have started uh, to target their applications to work well for standard users. Businesses now have a clearer path towards deploying standard user accounts, allowing these businesses to reduce support costs and uh, the overall TCO, that is the total cost of ownership, of its computers. In the home, families can use standard user accounts for children along with parental controls to create a safer environment. Windows 7. 
Windows 7 includes numerous enhancements to improve the standard user experience, and new configuration settings provide more control over the user account control form than running in administrative approval mode. The goal is to improve usability by continuing to make it clear to independent software vendors that the default security context they should be targeting is that of a standard user. In practice, uh, these uh, changes mean that users are not prompted for common administrative tasks in Windows 7. This is the setting that says notify me only when program tries to make uh, the change to my computer. The way this works uh, is uh, fairly straightforward. During a process creation, uh, the policy is checked to see if uh, this setting is enabled. If the process uh, being created uh, is uh, part of Windows, uh, which is verified by checking the Windows catalog files for its signature, the process is created uh, without a prompt. This setting does not prompt, then you change Windows settings, but instead enables you to focus on administrative changes being requested by non-Windows applications, such as installing a new software. For people who want greater control changes, Windows settings frequently without the additional notification. This setting results in fewer overall prompts and enables users to zero in on the key remaining notifications that they do see. The other significant change uh, in, uh, is that several components no longer uh, require administrative privileges. For example, users can configure whether their desktop should be displayed in high DPI mode. A commonly feature, uh, a common feature used as computer screens get larger and pixel sizes get smaller. Another example is that standard users can now reset their network connections when physically logged in into the computer. A common request Microsoft has heard from both home users and enterprise users. As you can see uh, in the screenshot, this is a USB prompt uh, in Windows 7. So, reducing prompts also means streamlining areas where multiple prompts uh, were encouraged and encountered for a single user. On Windows 7, for instance, installing ActiveX controls in Internet Explorer is much smoother. On Windows Vista, Internet Explorer 7 or 8 would create the ieinstall.exe process to perform the installation of an ActiveX control. This resulted in a UAC prompt that asked if you wanted to install an IE add-on or run with administrative privileges. This form didn't provide uh, much context about exactly what was being installed, and Internet Explorer would immediately prompt you to approve a particular control. On Windows 7 with Internet Explorer 8, the install process has been modified to use the ActiveX Installer service, which uh, will extract the ActiveX controller's publisher information and display it during the installation experience. Likewise, uh, you can see in the figure. Uh, I'm having a question. I'll just uh, I'll just get back to you, Pratap, uh, on a single note. In just a second. Okay, so. Uh, Answering your question, I'm just uh, okay. You can write to me. You can write to me. Uh, uh, so at the computer next dot com. You can uh, you can always uh, mail me at info at the computer next dot com, or you can just visit my blog at the computer next dot com. I'll continue with the webcast. Um, the next feature I'll be discussing is uh, the APP Locker. Okay, uh, should check the slide. So, 
the ability to control which applications a user or set of users can run offers significant increases in the reliability and security of enterprise desktops. Overall, an application uh, lockdown policy can lower the TCO of computers in an enterprise. Windows 7 adds APP Logger, a new feature that controls application that controls application execution and makes it even easier to author an enterprise application lockdown policy. So the basic hurdles was uh, understanding what software is used in your environment, knowing which applications uh, various users should be allowed to run, knowing how to author the necessary policy, determining whether a policy will uh, work correctly when deployed. To address these hurdles, ABP Locker offers a new approach that can audit how uh, an application lockdown policy will work. It provides uh, the ability to control how users run all types of applications, executable scripts, Windows installer uh, files, and DLLs. And it offers a new application lockdown policy primitive that are more specific than Windows System and uh, Windows XP. The enforcement modes are all implemented on top of uh, APP Locker's underlying uh, enforcement agent, which is implemented in the appid.sys driver. This driver offers uh, the ability to have kernel mode rule checking for such events as process, creation, and DLL loading. For applications that uh, implement enforcement in user mode, the legacy um, CIFR identity level API is used to determine whether an application can run. But three for identity level will now hand the enforcement check over to a service to perform the actual verification of the binary and policy. This is a significant architectural enhancement over the legacy software restriction policy features. So to author APP Locker policy, there is a new APP Locker MMC snap in UX in the group policy object editor snap in UX which offers an incredible improvement in the process of creating APP locker rules. This uh, is a wizard that allows you to create a single rule, and another wizard automatically generates rules for you based on the rule preferences and folder that you select, like, uh, like I'm uh, getting you the screenshot. So you can create a new rule. You can automatically generate rules. You can uh, create default rules. So this is basically how it works. Windows 7 enables new scenarios and makes using Windows a more secure experience. Many of these features uh, have a strong focus on user experience for home users, business users, and IT professionals and allow Windows 7 systems to work even better. I would like to talk uh, a bit more about the security thing with the PKI investments in Windows 7. As you all know that, uh, I guess you all know that the Windows Server 2008 R2 is now um, coming out uh, in some time. I'm not sure when, but uh, uh, Windows 7 and Windows Server 2008 R2. So I'll talk about uh, a bit about the server consolidation, improved existing scenarios, software to services, and strong authentication. So it seems like uh, just like yesterday that um, uh, the PK announcement in Windows Vista was a common thing. There, uh, it was uh, now. Over, oh, I'll just switch to. So. Here is a slide that will just show you about the Windows 7 investments. There is a strong authentication part, the server consolidation improved, existing scenarios and software to services. I'll start with uh, the uh, server consolidation. One of the predominant themes in IT over the past few years has been server consolidation. Simply put, uh, this is about reducing the total footprint of your server computing environment while still meeting or even expanding your business objectives. The current global economy has made cost saving a top priority for many IT groups, and server consolidation can certainly be one component of that general strategy. 
while most organizations do not uh, have large absolute numbers of CAs, many do have more than they need to solely base certificate creation throughput. In other words, uh, many organizations have CAs that are vastly underutilized. While uh, tab, Windows 7 and Windows Server 2008 are two uh, contains some of the most important new PKI technologies since Windows 2000 introduced automatic certificate requests. This uh, new functionality makes PKIs easier and more efficient to manage, delivering a better experience for end users. Windows 7 uh, includes uh, powerful new capabilities that make running a PKI more efficient while greatly enhancing the auto enrollment function. Cross forest enrollment can dramatically reduce the total number of CAs required by an organization and make it easier to manage PKS operations during mergers, acquisitions, and diverse structures. This uh, new uh, best practices analyzer makes it easier for administrators to check a common configuration problems before out, uh, outages occur. Capabilities such as support for server core and a non persistence request makes it easier to tailor CA operations to specific organizational needs and HTTP enrollments open up a new method to automatically provision certificates across organizations and network boundaries. End users will also benefit from Windows 7 PK features that make it easier to use certificates in their daily work. The improved certificate selection the in interface makes it easier for users to choose the right certificate for a given purpose and successfully authenticate more quickly. Smart card improvements uh, like plug and play based driver installation and native support for cards, uh, card standards means less time needs to be uh, spent getting cards to work on a user system. Finally, the inclusion of native support for biometrics will provide a more consistent and seamless experience for both end users and administrators. So I'll uh, urge you to uh, go out and check out the beta if you haven't already done it and uh, we would like your feedback on it. So I'll again say if you uh, have, uh, if you are using the beta and uh, you are uh, having some questions on Windows 7, you can surely ask them here and uh, you can simply use the Q&A panel at the top and uh, you can ask me uh, if you are having a problem with Windows 7. I am here to answer it. I'll uh, wait for your questions for uh, about five minutes and then I'll continue. Thank you. There are no questions for me as of now, and um, I would uh, urge you people, if you have any questions regarding Windows 7, or even Windows Vista, you can ask me here uh, by using your Q&A panel. Feel free to ask anything you like. I'll be happy to answer.
on having three questions. Okay, I'm answering the questions one by one. Okay, and you said we restrict the user for particular application. Then can I restrict the accessing of local file for or file? Uh, uh, Tatish, uh, the Windows, uh, the Windows 7 uh, right now is in the beta phase. Sure, you can control extra. Uh, the you can restrict accessing of local drive folder or a file. So you can go in many nice details security features with the solutions that are provided in uh, Windows 7. You can surely, if you are not uh, exactly using the beta right now, I will I, I have to say that you have to go and you have to use the beta and you can see for yourself how good it works. So please use the security features. Yes, you can do uh, many good things like you said, you can do it with Windows 7. I hope I answered your question well. Uh, if uh, there is anything else you would like to ask me, uh, feel free to ask. No problem. I'll just write it down for you. You can uh, work. Restrict the users from opening unwanted. Okay. So Deeraj asks me that uh, what is the most newly features in Windows 7? Okay. First of all, uh, these uh, best uh, what uh, which I am uh, doing uh, is just to tell you that uh, there are many new features in Windows 7. Windows 7, as I told before, uh, that uh, Windows uh, 7 gives you. I'll write it down. So it could be better. Windows 7 provides Windows provides you with a better safe uh, working environment. Uh, the best new features are a, a rock solid uh, security thing with Windows 7. And uh, the simpler UI, uh, the more um, cooler interface, the uh, best, nicest theme basically is the secure part. If I say you turn off UI, then you will be uh, with the Windows core, but the core gets secure. What uh, exactly do you need uh, in a Windows, uh, in an operating system rather than Windows? You need a secure environment. You need it uh, to be great for gaming. Yes, Windows 7 is great for gaming. If you say that uh, you want it secure, yes, it is secure. If you want it to be simpler, uh, less prompting, uh, it is less prompting and it is simpler. So there are tons of features to explore. So if you haven't already used Windows, just go for it. I'll uh, sh I I'm sure that you'll like it. So as everyone uh, says that imagine a life without walls, uh, where nothing comes between you and a world of opportunities. With Windows on your mobile phone, PC or the web, walls begin to disappear. At home, at the office and anywhere in between. Balance work, life fun and functionality. That's Windows, life without walls.
how uh, do you share music? Uh, you can read the news. Uh, one of the great things about PCs is how uh, they help you to put your pictures, videos, and music in one place. Once everything uh, is in that uh, spot, it's natural to want to share it uh, all with other PCs in your home. Windows 7 helps you do it. I'll just change it to Skype. So I hope I have uh, made uh, my points clear. And if I haven't, uh, then I'll urge you to please uh, put me through with the Q&A panel, and I'll be happy to answer any queries uh, you have. So Windows 7 helps you do it. Windows 7 introduces new media sharing features that make your PC a great hub for experiencing audio, video, and pictures throughout your home. So when you set up a home group or stream media from media center, media uh, player, the Windows Media Player, you can enjoy your music, pictures, and videos on other computers running Windows 7 and other devices in your home. I hope you all have heard about the Windows Touch technology. Uh, while uh, great for a lot of stuff, using a keyboard and mouse is not always the easiest way to do things. If you have a touch screen monitor, you can just touch your computer screen for uh, a more direct, natural way to work. Use your fingers to scroll, resize windows, play media, and pan and zoom. Large touch sensitive uh, areas on the start menu and the taskbar makes it easier to use. I'll be uh, I'll be taking uh, the touch part, uh, the Windows touch part, and the um, more detailed accessibility features in my next webcast on uh, 27th. So I hope you all will join in then, and uh, it will be a great uh, webcast session if you want to go in detail with the accessibility features. So uh, just giving you a cue of it, the handwriting recognition addition. The handwriting recognition takes a big step forward in Windows 7. Beginning with greater accuracy and speed, Windows 7 improves pen inputs in several ways. You can write math expressions, create personalized custom uh, dictionaries for handwriting recognition, and use the new language support in Windows 7. Of course, you can also use a pen to make uh, just a quick list. So. Here are some of the features I discussed today. I hope you like this. If uh, now you are having any questions regarding Windows 7, you can ask it to me. If you want to know about a particular feature, if you want to know about a particular detail, just use the Q&A panel, and I'll be happy to help. I'm not having any questions as of now. If you have any questions in mind, you can just uh, use a Q&A panel, and uh, I'll answer them. Okay, I'm having a question. I'll just answer it. Uh, you don't need to raise your hand, Balaji. I'll answer it on the way.
okay as of now uh, the answer with uh, windows 7 can you migrate your vista license to windows 7 is uh, no as for now i'm adding that uh, because the product is in a uh, beta stage now we cannot talk about uh, the user license agreement and every kind of a formal integration with windows but i can assure you of one thing uh that uh, as with every windows after you purchase after the official windows 7 is launched you if you purchase the 32 bit version you can surely uh, uh you can surely um, call upon for a uh, windows uh, 64 bit edition rather than uh, windows 32 you can order the cd by your oem or your retail dealer and he'll get it uh, he'll get that to you for free Okay, uh, just uh, with the, um, some more information, I just got uh, from a live source. Uh, any Windows Vista PC shipping after the next couple of months will have an automatic upgrade to Windows 7 by the manufacturer's OEM. So uh, it's good that if you buy a Windows Vista PC in the next couple of months and uh, you want Windows 7, then you will get an upgrade via automatic upgrade to Windows 7 by your uh, OEM manufacturer. I guess this is a good thing. So I guess uh, that's uh, it for today, and uh, I'm going to wrap up the session today. And uh, it was a nice having a webcast with all of you attending it. Mm, I'm Shantanu Kaushik. I'm bidding you goodbye for today, and we'll uh, meet again on uh, 27th. So I hope you enjoyed the session today. Please uh, send your feedbacks. Thank you.